right, so today we are talking about vision. So uh, with your eye, you looked at the parts of the eye um, that are kind of basically the large parts of the eye. Um, what I wanted to tell you about is the retina. So the retina was, remember, the part of the eye that um, is kind of the inside layer of the eye. Remember um, when you did your model, guys? Okay, your retina is this very thin layer on the inside of your eye, okay? Inside of your eye, and it goes around. Um, and what happens is, is there are, within this layer of the retina, there's all of these um, little pieces here that I wanted to kind of talk about. Um, and this diagram is also in your book, okay? But I wanted to kind of uh, make sure uh, we go through it and explain it just to be sure that we're all on the same page. So, first of all, your retina. Okay, your retina, <coughs> this is um, after light goes through your, uh, the other parts of your eye and um, it goes back to the back of your eye and goes through the retina to the suspense, rods and cones, <laughs> the rods and cones. Um, in this diagram up here, um, the blue little pieces up here, these are the rods, the cones are these orange, kind of orangey yellow pieces. Okay, those are the cones. There are rods and cones um, in your retina, okay, that goes all the way around the, out, the inside of your eye, okay, this thin layer that goes on the inside of your eye. Um, and rods and cones are going to be um, slightly different. So the rods are going to detect the black, white, and gray, okay? So um, rods do not detect color. Notice that we have more rods than we have cones, okay? So rods are detecting the black, white, and gray, and this is necessary for peripheral vision. So what's peripheral vision? Like I see more. Yes, uh, of kind of like the sides of um, your, uh, the sides of your face, kind of, those are gonna be um, in your peripheral vision. Um, rods are also um, necessary for twilight vision. What's, a, what's twilight vision? <laughs> when, uh, when it's kind of getting dark and it's uh, that time period where it's not quite light out anymore, it's not really dark yet, so that twilight time period, that's when rods um, in your eyes are going to be uh, most activated. Okay? Um, the cones, on the other hand, um, detect fine detail um, and color sensations. Now, we're going to talk about color in a little bit. But... Uh, your cones are going to detect the fine detail and the uh, color sensations. They are going to function during daylight and uh, well-lit conditions. So um, right now I have the lights off. So are your rods or your cones being um, activated more? Your rods because this is a not as well-lit area. So as a result, you are um, having to use more of your rods than your cones. All right, so this is the uh, rods and cones. So the light comes in through uh, the retina, it hits the back of the uh, eye, right? Hits the retina, goes, activates the rods and cones. So the rods and cones are activated, and then um, it's going to trigger these chemical changes, okay, that activate the bipolar cells, which activate the ganglion cells. Okay, the bipolar cells are um, these uh, kind of, uh, I don't know what color you call these, dark purplish colors right here, okay, in the middle. These are, um, so it basically is going to, your, the light is going to travel all the way to the back and hit the rods and cones, and then it is going to trigger a chemical reaction. It's kind of like a domino effect. So the rods and cones are activated, and then you have the bipolar cells that are activated, and then you have to activate the ganglion cells. Okay. So this nice little domino effect, and it goes and triggers one next to the other. And then when you get the ganglion cells, then your ganglion cells, and it's kind of hard to see, but the ganglion cells um, kind of all converge, and um, they all kind of come together. It's like, um, it's like, uh, it's like uh, the uh, it's like wires all coming together, all these strings together. Um, I'm probably thinking of this because my... Uh, Girl Scout Troop um, did a 
jewelry badge uh, over the weekend. But do you remember friendship bracelets? Yes. Okay. So friendship bracelets, you have all these um, individual little strings, right? And then um, they are coming together, and you're basically knotting it or braiding it or whatever to come form one big bracelet, right? So the ganglion cells are all the individual strings, right? And when the ganglion cells come together, what are they forming? They're coming together to form the optic nerve. Okay? So the ganglion cells will come together to form the optic nerve. So in my analogy, the ganglion cells are the, um, are the strings. Okay? The optic nerve um, is going to be the uh, it's like bridge bracelet. bracelet. Okay? So that's the brain. That's the one piece, right? So when your optic nerve, your optic nerve basically exits the back of your eye, and so the optic nerve, so you can see that um, up here you have your ganglion cells, and they're kind of like the light purple, and you have these little lines that are coming out, and they're converging together here. Um, and so looking at big picture, okay, here's your big eye. Your um, ganglion cells are coming together on both sides, and they're going to go out the back of your eye into the optic nerve. Yes? Uh, with the rod and the static, why would you go to really dark and why your eyes would be dark? Mm -hmm. Yep, your eyes have to adjust, and so um, your pupils will dilate or not, uh, um, <coughs> they uh, will shrink or dilate down depending upon um, how much um, light they need to let in okay, to be able to activate things. Um, so that's part of the reason why um, your pupil will change size. Okay. Um, also, obviously, chemicals will also interfere with when your pupils dilate, um, whether that be natural chemicals within your body or else if it was chemicals that you introduced into your body, that will also affect the dilation of your pupils. Okay, so the ganglion cells come together to form the optic nerve. Where the optic nerve exits um, the eye, and this is where your optic nerve actually travels up to your brain and gives your brain the information. Um, when you do that, uh, what's that part of the eye? What is this also called right here? What do we have happening right there where the uh, optic nerve leaves the eye? That's the blind spot. Why is that a blind spot? There's no receptors there. You don't have any rods or cones there, so it doesn't take in any information in there. So as a result, that's where your blind spot is. So where your optic nerve leaves the eye, there's no receptors, so then you have a blind spot there. Now, after the information leaves your eye and it goes on with the optic nerve to your brain, okay, your brain is going to process the information that you see, the stimuli that you see, okay? So, I think I got enough time to be able to talk about one last thing um, before we quit for today. Uh, so, the last thing that I want to talk about is information processing. So, how do you process that information? So, there's two things that I wanted to talk about. Um, well, apparently I'm going to talk about them both at once. Uh, so, the uh, Hubble and Weissel, I don't know if I'm saying their names right, uh, Hubble and Weissel um, were, um, actually got a Nobel Prize for when they determined feature uh, detectors. Um, basically, what they determined is, is that there are parts of your brain, okay, that um, pick up on specific features of um, specific stimuli. So um, I put this picture up because I found uh, this one, this must have been somebody's psychology project, where they were explaining that feature detector, detectors, it says specialized neurons that detect or differentiate um, different um, differences in shapes, angles, and movements. So Sam, see it, Sam? Shapes, angles, and movements. Um, and so these, when you look at something, okay, I look at the, uh, Play-Doh container, okay, and I can detect that it's a cylinder. I can detect the angles as far as the angles of the actual canister, but I can also detect if I'm throwing it up in the air and catching it, I'm detecting the movement as well. So what they found though is there's different parts of your brain that will pick up the different features of a particular item, of a particular stimulus. Okay? Now, the other thing is, we've already talked about parallel processing. What's parallel processing? Remember when we talked about parallel processing? We talked about the state of consciousness. Yep, you're being able to process 
two things at once. So it kind of goes along with the feature detectors because um, while um, you're taking in the shape, you're taking in the angles of the Play-Doh container and the fact that I'm moving it, you're taking in them all at once. So you're taking in more than one thing at one time and you're processing it all as one piece of information. Okay? This is different than, for example, computers that can only take in one piece of information at a time. Okay? So, um, and that's part of the reason why you know, your computer will slow down if you have too many programs open. It can't think like that. Okay? It doesn't think like a human and it doesn't think like a person where we can take in more than one thing at once. Okay? All right. Anybody have any questions about how the retina works or how we process information? Okay. Um, what we're going to do probably more tomorrow is looking at color um, and how uh, color is different for everybody. Anybody in here colorblind? Okay. Anybody ever done the colorblind test? What? Your job. <laughs> Anybody ever do the colorblind test before? No. No? Okay. So what we'll take a look at is um, we'll take a look at determining um, how, how do we actually see color? Now, we already said, um, do rods or cones see color? Cones. Cones see color. Rods see black, white, and gray. The cones see color. So how can you explain, how do we explain the variances in color that we see? And why is it that some people don't see color? Okay? And when we say somebody is colorblind, what does that mean? Well, it's different. It does. It is different. What are you going to say? Yes, one of the types of cones don't work. So we'll talk about the uh, trichromatic um, theory, um, but we'll also talk about um, other theory, the other theory, and I can't think of that for a moment now, um, where uh, why is it that we see um, different colors um, depending upon who you are and what um, you're looking at, okay? So um, tomorrow I think I will go through an explanation that, and I will uh, give you a colorblind test, and we'll see it show you uh, if you are colorblind, what it would look like versus obviously not color one how you see it. Okay? Alright, questions? There are like different like, levels of color one. Yes, there are different uh, I wouldn't say levels, but there's different things as far as color